Okay, the exciting part. So in chapter 19, Rick and Cracker had gone to Calera Village. And during the process, there was an ambush. Um, Cracker tried to warn them. They didn't listen. Um, Rick tried to warn them. They didn't listen. And during the process, um, they were being ambushed. Rick got injured. Must have been a pretty serious injury. They gave him some, um, he thought, um, morphine. And the last thing that we read in chapter 19, he was trying to um, convince the doctor he needed to find Cracker because um, someone had um, exploded um, a mortar shell near um, a dirt, um, like a barrack or a kind of a, like a little dam area where he was hiding out in the rice paddy and mud had gone to his eyes and he couldn't see anything. Now he doesn't know where Cracker is. So now he's um, out of it. And the doctors promised to find Cracker for him. So chapter 20. When the firing started, Cracker tried to stick close to Rick. But after he pushed her away, a burst of gunfire divided them and she had no choice but to go left while he went right. The gunfire seemed to be chasing her, so she kept going left while the gunfire followed. Finally, she reached the rice paddy where she crawled along a dike to get away. And that's the little dam, up, um, tiny little dams that they hold the water in the, the rice paddies where they grow the rice. Then she'd spotted that rat again. He was worth about 10 hot dogs in her opinion, and he was slow. She crushed him in her teeth, but just as she did, she felt a sharp jerk on her leash. A man had grabbed it. She tried to lunge, but he pulled so hard that she yelped and fell to the ground. Then something pounded on her head. The last thing she remembered was the rat slipping out of her mouth. She woke up in some kind of a dark room that smelled of human urine. Several men were talking in excited voices. A touch of light trickled in from somewhere. Her neck hurt and her head pounded. Several men stood looking at her, laughing and pointing, and she knew the men were talking about her. She recognized the man who grabbed her leash earlier. She held a stick now, he held a stick now and was acting as if he were hitting something. Then he rolled his eyes as if he were passing out. All the men laughed. Then one man started yelling at her. The man with the stick raised it in the air and another man began calling dog to her. She, so, she stood up unsteadily. The men laughed at her again. And the man with the stick relaxed. And as he did, she bounded away, sailing past them in one leap. The second she landed, she flew into the air again, speeding as fast as she could down the long tunnel that smelled of dirt and of people. She kept running through the tunnel after tunnel. Sometimes people would look up at her, surprised. One room was filled with children who shouted excitedly as she ran through. She didn't even know where she was going, just that she needed to keep moving. She moved much more quickly than the men chasing her. She smelled fresh air and moved toward that, up and up, through a slender tunnel until she spotted the sky. She scurried out of the tunnel and tried to get her bearings, but she kept running. The sound of voices grew farther away. She didn't stop until she reached a jungle. And then she stood perfectly still for a moment, hearing and smelling nothing but jungle noises and jungle smells. A bird called from a tree. She bristled a little, but knew she had more important things to do. Cracker always knew what direction was what, but she felt something unfamiliar now, uncertainty. She always knew, but now she didn't know, not for sure. If only her head would stop hurting. Why was it hurting? She tried to shake the pounding out of her head, but it wouldn't go away. She turned to the left and then the right, then behind herself. She used to know in what direction Willie lived, but now she didn't. She turned around again and decided to go that way. She felt better after traveling a distance. This must be the right way, right? She was thirsty and hungry, and the leash dangling from her neck annoyed her. But she felt confident again. She did feel anxious about being separated from Rick, but felt confident about where she'd last seen him. She hoped he was still there. There was a moment that day when she thought she'd passed the same place twice, and she lost confidence and whined. But she kept going. She needed to find Rick. She trotted at the edge of a rice paddy. All the peasants in their big hats looked up and called to one another, pointing her out. She didn't understand a word they were saying, but she knew she couldn't let them catch her. A couple of them shouted something and started running in her direction. It was easy to outdistance them, even with the dog she heard baying behind her. 
They were so far away. She was so fast and strong. Her legs were unaffected by uncertainty. She understood now that she needed to avoid humans. Nobody could be trusted except Rick and people Rick trusted. She began moving more slowly, but still steadily, making sure nobody saw her. The jungles took longer to move through, but unlike the paddies and villages, they were empty, of humans at least. Once, she did hear a human voice, but it was far away. Another time, she stopped when she smelled one of the smells that Rick had trained her to respond to. She sat down automatically and pondered what to do. She could hear the wind passing over a string. She stood up and moved slowly until the noise grew louder and the smell of gunpowder filled her nose. Then she simply walked around the string and the gunpowder. She wished she knew the direction for sure, the way she used to. She pushed down any doubt and searched her mind for uncertainty, before certainty. For a moment, she just about had it, but the pounding in her head wouldn't stop and she lost her certainty. When she was thirsty, she looked around until she found a trickle of water seeping beneath some rocks. Rick never let her drink unless he gave her the water, but she was thirsty, so she drank. Looking around guiltily ever so often, the water tasted clean and fresh, so she drank as much as she could before she started to feel the pull of Rick. She had to get to him. He needed her. She helped him. She was important. She trotted on and on, even when her stomach growled with hunger. Hunger was important, but not like thirst. She could go on without water. She couldn't go on without water, but food, she could last a while without that. The time came when the sky was dark and her body began to ache, and she didn't think she could go further. She walked long distances before, but had never run so much in her life. She sniffed around the dark jungle. She knew she could see better at night than Rick or Willie because they always moved around comically in the dark with their hands out in front of them to feel their way. That seemed funny to her sometimes. But the darkness was so dark that her eyes couldn't gather enough light to know what was around her. Cracker could hear, though, and she could smell, so she had a pretty good idea of where she was and all that was around her. She knew the size of the leaves hanging from the trees, how disintegrated the leaves on the ground were, how softly the wind blew, everything except what color it all was. She felt ants crawling on her back. She walked a little farther to an area that didn't seem to have so many ants, though she knew they would come after her. She sniffed around, first raising her head this way, raising her head the way she'd been taught, but she didn't smell anything unusual in the wind. Then she lowered her nose and sniffed the ground the way she'd been taught not to do. She pawed at the dirt, clearing away a nice area of dirt to lie in. Even when she lay down, the anxiety feel of finding Rick still ran along through her, but the feeling of needing sleep was even stronger. Before she closed her eyes, she raised her nose once more. It smelled nothing special, so she let herself sleep.